to that song and having you all say hello from all over the world. Um, welcome to this session. I can see people from Ukraine, um, Argentina, that's where I'm based. So welcome, Germany, Poland, Colombia, Ecuador, that's lovely. Um, there are lots of steam references in this song. Were you listening carefully? This is Pearson's course, English Code. It's the song from that, uh, that course. And the steam references are exploring the world, watching the birds, looking at the stars, being scientists. We can float, some of us like numbers, finding the code, drawing pictures. Isn't that lovely? And we're all different, but we're all in this world together. So welcome to the first English Code STEAM lesson walkthrough. This is still a continuation of the Experiences STEAM series. Um, you may have attended the previous two webinars on STEAM. This is the first lesson walkthrough within this series. And next Wednesday, we're going to have the second lesson walkthrough um, again, from the same series of four webinars. Um, so I'm happy to have you if you've been with me before. And if this is your first time joining me, then I hope you really enjoy it a lot. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to delve deeper into practically using STEAM. And I'm going to use a lesson from English Code to walk you through it and concentrate on the essential steps for a successful STEAM lesson in your classroom. Um, so this is a series of two webinars which are walkthroughs apart from those previous two webinars that you may have joined me for. And this one um, will be based on a science experiment about toys that sink and 
float. It's from level one English code. In the second webinar next week, we're going to, I'm going to be demonstrating an engineering experiment about building strong bridges. So I hope you'll join me then too. So although this is a demonstration, it doesn't mean you're just going to be watching what I do. I still want to interact with you. So please do feel free to use the chat box to ask questions, answer questions, contribute with your ideas as teachers, but also as students, because I'm going to be teaching you a STEAM lesson. So you're going to become students as well at some point today. I will ask you to please, please pretend that you are students and interact with me like a learner at some points in grade one primary. Um, so you would also be interacting as a teacher. So I'll be asking you to do the experiment with me as well if you have the materials nearby so that we can make it nice and interactive and you can tell me what's happening on your side with the experiment as well. So of course, these are experiments that you can do at home with simple materials and objects that you are of course familiar with. Okay, so um, first we're going to look at quickly what is STEAM in case there's someone who is not familiar with the term. We're going to go into the lesson walkthrough. We'll start from the beginning, how we start this lesson, and then we'll go into the experiment itself and try and do that together if it is possible for you to do it with me. And at the end, we'll go back and think about what we did from the beginning and reflect on that. So first of all, what is STEAM? Chat box, please. What is STEAM? Who knows what STEAM stands for? Science, yes. Technology, yes. Engineering, art and design, maths. Lovely, you got it. Okay, there we go. So this is what the acronym stands for, all these five subjects and the intention is to integrate the subjects and um, use a very connected approach. So we're not doing a maths lesson in English. We're not doing a science lesson in English. We're still teaching our English aims. We're going to be working with our English aims as we always do, but we're not going to become scientists or mathematicians to do this. We're still language teachers and we're still teaching a language, but we're going to be including a little bit of science or technology, engineering, art and design or maths in our lessons. So it's an integrated approach to learning that celebrates creative thinking, experimenting, and problem solving. Um, so if you attended the previous two webinars, um, which were not the lesson walkthroughs, but webinars about STEAM, then you would already know this, wouldn't you? I hope it um, it's clear to the rest of you, if you haven't joined me before, or if you're not familiar with the term, this is what we're referring to when we talk about STEAM. But I'm sure it's going to be much clearer while we go through the whole lesson. So let's start by introducing this STEAM lesson. In English code, you'll find one STEAM lesson in each unit. The section is called Experiment Lab. And although this is specifically the STEAM lesson, the whole course really revolves around subjects like science. The other sections in the course book are Story Lab or Language Lab or Phonics Lab. The word lab instantly makes you think of science, doesn't it? So it's all connected there too. So the lesson that I will walk you through today is an experiment in which students will learn about different materials that toys are made of and test to see if these materials sink or float. Now, I'd like to ask you a question for you to answer in the chat box. An experiment that explores objects that sink or float? Would you say it's science, technology, engineering, art and design, or maths? What would you say that experiment is? Is it science, technology, engineering, art and design, or maths? What are we focusing on? Ah, lovely answers. Okay, many of you are saying science. Some of you are saying engineering. Okay, now let's have a little think about that. That's really interesting. So most, most, most of the time you would think about science, wouldn't you? But if you look at the, the, the slide, you'll see it says engineering at the top. Under experiment lab, it says engineering. 
And what does it say next to that? It says materials. Because what we're doing is not only the science experiment of floating or sinking, but we're looking at the materials themselves. Okay, so that's interesting, isn't it? Um, most of the time, these subjects connect in some way. That's why this is an integrated approach. Although we think it's science, it also involves a lot of engineering, understanding how materials work, properties of objects, characteristics of materials is essentially an engineering concept, even if we're doing science experiments. Great, lovely ideas. So this lesson is part of a unit all around the theme of toys. You know, it's one of those typical things we teach in primary, isn't it? We teach toys. It's called Let's Play. This is the name of the unit itself. So remember, this is level one. And the big leading question of this unit is, how can I make a toy that floats? So by learning about toys, learning toy words in English, listening to a story about toys, learning about materials in the STEAM lesson, then learners in the end will be able to complete their project in which they actually make a toy that floats because they will have a broad understanding about how to do this. They have learned about it throughout the unit. Okay, and it leads, all the unit leads on to that leading question. Um, so this is where you become students in grade one primary level. Are you ready? I'll be talking back and forth to learners and teachers. So we might end up a bit um, with, with multiple personalities today, a bit bipolar, but never mind. For the setup of this lesson, I would have you learners sit in a circle first. Okay. We're going to start with a lead-in to the STEAM experiment so that it's still language-based because we're still we're teaching language. We don't go straight into the STEAM experiment. We want to make sure our language aims are present and we want to remind our learners of the language that they will use to complete this STEAM experiment. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to what they've been learning in terms of language first. So for those of you who have attended the previous webinars on STEAM hosted by Pearson, I always make a point that we don't stop what we're doing as language teachers to do STEAM. It's part of what we do. We include it in the topic, the theme or the project we're working on already. So it's all connected and the language is all there and we need to scaffold nicely so that they can reach the point of the STEAM lesson where they can use the language. So what we'll do first is, before going straight into the STEAM lesson, on the day we're going to do it, we go back to page 12. Page 12 would have been a page that we've already worked with, okay? We've hypothetically worked on page 12, which is that page there that says toy room. And we're going to revise toy words because they'll need toy words for the experiment. So we don't want to jump straight into to it and confuse them or get them nervous about it. They have to be clear about the language they need to use. We need to know that they know the language very well. And then we go into the STEAM experiment. So we'll just do a quick open your, your books on page 12. Look at the pictures, what's this? So they'll say, it's a train. What's this? It's a ball. What's this? It's an airplane. What's this? It's an octopus. What's this? It's a teddy bear. What's this? It's building blocks. What's this? It's a boat. We just go over the vocabulary. They need the vocabulary for this experiment. Just make sure they know it. Then we'll play a little game perhaps. So in the circle, you can give every other student a toy flashcard and have them ask the next student next to them. They ask, what's this? And their partner answers, it's a train. If they answer correctly, they get the flashcard, turn around, asks their partner. So the flashcards go around the circle and they're asking and answering the question. Okay, so it's their turn to ask and answer. The only thing we're doing here is revising that vocabulary that they've learned throughout the unit until we get to the STEAM lesson. If you're doing it online, because some of you might be working online, I would ask learners to bring toys to their online lesson. 
or it could be drawings of toys that you have made the lesson before or have asked them to do. Uh, it could be cutouts from magazines or you've done a Google search and printed out some pictures of toys. So they need their toys, whatever they are, real toys or pictures. Um, then I would start by asking one student, Maria, what's this? And Maria will say, it's a doll on the online class. And then Maria will ask someone else, uh, John, what's this? And John will answer, it's a ball. And then John will show a picture or a toy and ask someone else in the online classroom. So you can still do this online. Don't worry about that. Um, many te teachers worry that by doing Aurelia, yes, Marjorie. Many teachers worry that by doing projects or STEAM or art or anything different to what we normally do, then we're losing track of our actual teaching of English. But see, no, that's not what we're doing. We're still, we've still got our English aims. So that doesn't happen because STEAM is an integrated approach to learning. So it's great for integrating language and science or maths and science or language and engineering. So it's not a science class or a math class. We're doing English, but we're adding some science into it, okay? Um, so the lead-in is really important, so we make sure they know the language that they will need. Otherwise, they're going to be interrupting the experiment because they don't remember the language. We don't want that, we want it to go smooth. So see at the top of the page, you have a lesson objective. Today, I will learn about toy materials, it says. So can you say that with me, please? Ready, one, two, three. Today, I will learn about toy materials. <laughs> So that learners are aware of what they're going to be doing and what their learning is and what the objective is, okay? So next, what we're going to do to start working on this science and engineering concept is to watch a video. So let's watch this little video. What of different, different materials. What is it made of? What is of? it made of? It's made of metal. Metal sinks in water. What is it made of? It's made of wood. Wood floats on water. Okay, so I could pause that video. And when the, the lady puts some metal in the water, I could pause it and say, what do you think will happen? Will it sink or will it float? Use your gestures for sink and float. And then I could play it again, see what happens. Then pause it after the wood and see what happens. Do you think it will sink or do you think it will float? Okay, now I'm going to ask you to go and get a toy, please. Hmm, okay, seriously. If you've got a toy near you, please grab it. Grab your toy if you have one near you. Um, so if you have children, you've probably got a toy lying around. Go and get it, it's on the floor over there. Go and get that toy that's thrown on the floor over there. If you haven't got a toy near you, just get any object any object, metal, uh, plastic, wood, fabric, any object you've got around. It doesn't matter what it is, just any object, a glass of water, whatever you've got, get something, an object or a toy. You've got a toy, it's even better, but never mind if not. Okay, if you have a rubber, that's fine, Claudia. Yes, just grab whatever you've got near you, a pen, anything. So I'm going to, um, we're going to pretend if it's not a toy that it is a toy, but it doesn't really matter what it is. And we're going to discover their properties and characteristics so it can be anything really. But wait, when you hear me saying one, two, three, you need to be back with your toy or your object, okay? When you hear one, two, three, you need to be back and ready, sitting down to start the experiment. Ready, steady, go. Go and get a toy, a toy, a toy. Go and get a toy, I'll be waiting for you. Go and get a toy, a toy, a toy. Go and get a toy, I'll be waiting for you. One, two, three. You need to be back now. Okay, are you all back? We've got people with paper, with cups, 
uh, with a pencil, with a rubber. That's perfect. With a teddy bear, lovely. Okay, chess. What have you got? Ch a chessboard, um, a cut paper, a car, lovely, a toy car, fantastic. A pillow. Everything you've got there is perfect. A rabbit, lovely. Lego, train, fantastic. Okay, you're all ready to go. Now, if you're doing this online, you can always do what I'm doing now. You sing a song. This is level one. You can sing songs with them. Sing a song for them to go and get their material ready. Use it for anything you want, okay? Go and get your glue, go and get whatever you want and give them time to go and get it. Um, now, what I want you to do is feel your toy or your object, but I'll say toy just because we're in a toy unit, a stress ball, that's lovely. Um, okay, feel your toy. Okay, say science words when you do things like this. It's soft, it's furry, it's smooth. Okay, you'll find suggestions in English Code's teacher's book for things like this. And if you feel, okay, you're telling me your words, lovely, hard, brittle, cold, lovely. Okay, now the weight. Okay, is it heavy or, or is it light? This is very light. This is very light. This is heavier. This glass of water is heavier. This is light, very light. Yeah, it's yours light. Yes, yours is soft and light, lovely. Okay, um, is it hard? Is it hard, like a table? This is hard, this table is hard, but this teddy bear is soft. So you give examples to talk about these science words, give examples. You touch the table to show something that's hard, you touch your teddy bear to show something that's soft. Don't just say, is it hard or soft? Because they might not understand what that means. So we need to give them the examples or gestures or show them things. This is hard, it's a glass and it's hard. Okay, um, so this is, I'm going to give you an example of what comes next. So I'll say, this is a teddy bear. It's made of fabric. It's soft, it's light. It's a teddy bear. It's made of fabric, okay? So um, I'm giving you the example of what we're going to be working with next, which is going to be this is a da, 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 or it's a da, 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 da. it's made of da, 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 da. that is the language we're going to be using in this experiment. So now we're going to go on to listening to an audio track. We're going to listen, read and point. So here we have those pictures, and you're going to listen to this audio track. Track 20. Track 20. Listen, listen, read, read, and point. and point. It's a train. It's made of wood. It's a ball. It's made of plastic. It's a car. It's made of metal. It's a teddy bear. It's made of fabric. Lovely. So we've got the language very clear there, the language that we're going to be using for this science experiment. Okay, so I'm going to go over this with you. So I would point to something with you and I would say, what's this? And you would say, it's a train. Now I'm going to ask you, what's it made of? It's a train. What's it made of? It's made of wood. Lovely. So if I point to the ball, it's a ball. What's it made of? Plastic. Lovely. Okay. So we'll go over all these words. We're learning new words now, which are wood, plastic, metal, and fabric. Those are the four new words we're learning in this DEEM experiment. So see that all the other language we've learned before, we're not going to have to learn all the toy words and all the material words today for this experiment. We've already learned the toy words. We're only learning four new words, which are the material words for this uh, experiment. So it's not too um, overwhelming. Um, now, look at this toy car. In the chat box, please, what's it made of? What's it made of? There you go. 
Metal. Thank you. It's made of metal. Good. Now, what I would say is everyone, you would have your pencil case with you. And I would say, everyone, show me a blue pencil. So everyone will show me a blue pencil. This is done in the face-to-face -face classroom or the online classroom exactly the same way. Show me a red pencil. Show me an orange pencil. Show me a green pencil. So everyone will show me their pencils to get ready for this next activity. OK. Now, if you look on the screen, you've got activity number two. Circle the toys with the right color according to the material they're made of. So you use your blue pencil for the metal toy, your orange pencil or your brown pencil for the wooden toy, the red pencil for the plastic toy, and the green pencil for the, fab the toy made of fabric. Okay? So then your students will do that to make sure they can recognize what materials these toys are made of. Remember the leading question is how can I make a toy that floats? So at the end of the whole unit, even after the STEAM experiment, they will make their own toy that floats. So they need to know about materials. Now I'll ask you to point and say with a partner, it's an airplane, it's made of metal. It's um, a doll, it's made of fabric. So you're going to be doing peer checking to check the answers of these are correct. And I'll walk around and monitor to check their answers are okay. So then I would ask my students, has anyone finished? Okay, if you're a fast finisher, so what I'm gonna say is, I'm going to tell the fast finishers to go back to page 12. Remember page 12? Page 12 was that first, that page we used at the beginning to go back to revise the toy words. So we're going to go back to that page 12. Okay, a page that we've already worked on. So fast finishers will move back to that, um, to that uh, page that you've already worked on. Zonia, you're saying building up from vocabulary all the way to a, to a complete thought. You like that. Yes, that's the idea. So you're building up from with the vocabulary they know, revise it, just take that and then add a few more words for that so that then we can get to that experiment. So that's the idea. You're getting it really well. So if you're a fast finisher, you're going to go to page 12 and you're going to group the toys now. Okay, I'm going to ask you as teachers now, how can children group toys? What different ways can we group toys? Think of their characteristics, their properties. Good, shapes, materials, by color, by size. Fantastic, lovely, okay. Which float and which sink? And we'll find out about that in a minute. Which are your favorite, which are not? Good, okay. Toys that have wheels, perhaps? Or toys that are representations of transport modes like boat, airplane, car, truck, and the rest of them. So you can group them like that as well. Yeah. So grouping is actually a mathematical concept. You need to use your logical thinking to find similarities and differences and to group things together. So we're actually mentioning we're doing a science experiment, but we're focusing on the engineering concept of materials. And we're going to be doing a little bit of maths concepts when we're grouping as well. So we're integrating a lot. You see how this all integrates the whole thing. So next step, with your partner or on your own at home, look at our classroom, look around our classroom or look in your home and find things in your classroom or in your home that are made of wood. Write in the chat box, things that you can find in your house made of wood. Desk, ruler, okay. Now, things that are made of plastic. So we want to make sure they know what these materials are. Okay, a plastic pen, a bottle, good, ornaments, okay. Um, now look around and find something made of or uh, fabric. What can you find that's made of fabric? Curtains, pillows, scarf, there you go. So you understand what these materials are. I'm checking that you can understand this. Um, good. So now, 
what you could do with your students, I'm trying to find my observation tool, is either ask them to just have a look around and find something, or you can ask them to go and get something if you're in the classroom or if you're doing the online lesson. You can also ask them to use their observation tool. If you came to my last webinar, you learned all about this really sophisticated observation tool, which is the cardboard tube. This helps you to narrow down your vision and find things and look at the details of things. So you can always play around with that. Remember, this is level one. They're young children and they like playing around. So let them, if you like, use their cardboard tube or their hand. So if you would like to do this with me, use your hand like this and make a tube. Close one eye and that you will see how that narrows your vision. Okay, and you'll be able to see the details of things much more clearly by doing that. So you become detectives. All right. So the next step is, this is digital literacy, digital literacy. Now, if you want to find out more about toys made of different materials on internet, how would you do that? How would you search for it? So we're going to be teaching our learners how to search for things online. You could use Google or Kiddle and you would write toys, the word and block capitals, wood, for example. And then you'd get lots of wooden toys. OK, lots of websites to search for wooden toys. So we're looking at digital literacy as well. So digital literacy is a part of technology, isn't it? We're integrating technology with this science experiment based on engineering because we're looking at the materials specifically. We looked at a maths, uh, we used a maths concept to develop mathematical thinking, which was grouping. And now we're looking at digital literacy. We've got four of those subjects in here. That's a lot. Okay, now, are you ready for the experiment itself? We're going into experiment time. This is exciting. Are you excited? Okay. We're going to read through. Uh, this is what we, what we need to do. Okay, so what do we need to do this experiment? What do you think we need? I'm just going to come back here. Okay, just a sec. All right, that was correct. So the instructions say for experiment time, float or sink? One, choose five toys. Okay, I'm not going to ask you to get five toys. One is okay. Two, what are they made of? We've been talking about what those objects you've got are made of. Three, do they float or sink? Guess. So first, we're going to guess before we actually do the experiment. This is really important. This is predicting. This is what scientists do. We don't just do it. We predict, we hypothesize. We write down what we think. Uh, we discuss our ideas, if you like, if they've got the level to do that. Or perhaps it's just a quick guess. It's okay. But we're predicting. We don't go straight into it. That's what scientists do. Four, put the toys in the water. Five, do they float or sink? So that's when you're going to try it and see what happens. Six, what are they made of? Seven, record your results. So you've got that little box there to record results. Float, and you would write plastic boat, for example. Sink, metal airplane, for example. Okay, so you've got that space there to record the data that you are finding out about, like scientists do as, as well. Um, so after we read out the instructions to what we're going to do, what you ask your students is, what do we need? Because they need to know what they need. They need to be responsible for their experiment. So we're not just going to tell them, okay, go and get this and this. And what do you need for this experiment? So could you write in the chat box, what do we need after reading these instructions? What do we need to do this experiment? Water. Good. What else? Okay, a glass with water or a container. 
a tank with water, good, okay? And toys, there you go, those three things. Container, it could be anything. So, um, container, water, yes, and toys, fantastic. Becoming aware of what they need to do and what they need to do the experiment is also something that scientists, engineers do. They plan, they plan ahead. They think about what they're going to do and how they're going to do it before they do it. You don't just give them all the, the whole thing to them and just go ahead and do it. Think, plan, it's the planning stage. Now, if you're near your kitchen and you can get to a container or if you've got a glass of water, that's also fine. Tupperware, plastic tub, a glass of water. Don't tell me how I've got a glass of water. Go get it. Fill it with water. Any water, just fill it with some water. Okay. Uh, and get a toy or an object, or it might be the one you've already got, but it has to fit inside that container. Okay. If it's a cup or a glass, it needs to be able to fit in there. So it needs to be something small. If you've got a big tub like this, you fill it up with water and you can get something bigger, a bigger object or a bigger toy, okay? Um, so get something that can get wet. You'll need something made of plastic, metal, uh, fabric or wood that can get wet, but you don't mind getting wet. It can be a toothbrush, a spoon, an apple, okay? Anything you don't mind getting wet and that you've got there near you. Okay, can you go and get that please? Container of any sort, fill it with water, an object that fits in it, toy or object. Okay, ready, steady, go, go. Go and get your material, your material, your material. Go and get your material, I'll wait for you. Go and get your material, your material, your material. Go and get your material, I'll wait for you. One, two, three. Are you all back? with your material, got it, Sadaf, yes, excellent. Okay, good, Rashmi, fantastic, you're with me, you're joining in and that's really, really nice. Good, David, oh, lots of people with me, fantastic. Okay, write a quick yes, already in the chat box, if you're with me and you're ready with your materials to do this experiment, ready, lovely. Thank you, everyone, that's really nice. Um, so I'll show you an example now. Okay, here we go. I've got too many things on my table right now. I'm not putting this toy in the water, am I? No, I'm not gonna get him wet. So I've got my, my car, my toy car. It's made of metal. Okay, it's made of metal. What do you think? Do you think it will sink in the water or do you think it will float on the water? Do you think it'll sink or do you think it will float? Remember that video we watched and that lady was talking about things that are made of metal and she said things that are made of metal and she showed us the metal, does it sink or does it float? Remember to always guess first, okay? Let's have a try. You all say sink, I think. All right, let's try this. And yeah, there it is. A sinking toy car made of metal. You're absolutely correct. Okay, so remember to guess first, then we test and so that we're predicting, we're testing, and then recording the data. So we're going to write down in that little box that we've got there, um, metal car under sink. Okay, so then we would say work with a partner and do it. So I'm only going to show you one example. I don't want to show you all the different toys. I will only do one example with you just to show you what you've got to do. I'll say, it's a toy car, it's made of metal. Does it sink or does it float? Try it and then write down the data in the box, okay? So I would say work with a partner now. Remember to guess 
first and then do your experiment. So now you're going to do this at home with the material that you've got, okay? And I'll go around monitoring if we were in the classroom, okay? In the online lesson, you can have them do this alone and then they can film it and send it back to you or you can do it live with them. You can have all their cameras on and they can all be testing this and see how easy it is. They don't need big, uh, complicated, sophisticated material to do it, do they? So they can all do this at home, okay? So at home, you would have all your children doing this experiment or in your classroom. This is an airplane. It's made of wood. Do you think it will sink or float? What do you think? Will it sink or float? It's made of wood. Hmm, okay, float, 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 most of you. All right, let's have a look. Let's see, some of you say sink and some of you say float. Most of you say float. Let's have a look at what happens with this airplane. Yes, it floats, it floats on the water. Look, there we go, it's made of wood, isn't it? Okay, remember the leading question is how can I make a toy that floats? So we're learning about this. Am I going to make something out of metal? No, because it won't float. Am I going to make something out of wood? I could. Hmm, we'll have to see what else we can use. How about this airplane? This airplane is made of plastic. What do you think will happen? Will it sink or float? Oh, someone likes my airplane. <laughs> It's my son's airplane. Um, float, you think? It's made of plastic. It's made of plastic. Do you think it will sink or will it float? Let's see. Okay, it floats. Now, I'm just doing this right now with you because I think it's super fun to do it. But don't do it as a teacher because if you do it, then your learners are not doing it. And if you, don't, if you do it for them, you're ruining it. Don't ruin it for them just because it's exciting for yourself. <laughs> That's the thing with STEAM. It's something different. It's creative and it's exciting. And it's exciting not only for learners, but also for teachers because we're doing something different. So we want to do it as well, don't we? But just do one. Show them how the steps go, how to do it, but then let them try it with their own materials. So try your materials right now. Ready, steady, go. Predict first. Remember to predict. Think. Will it sink or will it float? Okay, now one, two, three. Drop your object in the water, see what happens. And come back to me to tell me what toy it is, what it's made of, and sink or float. So you write in the chat box, box car, metal, sinks. Okay. We want to know, remember, we want to know what the material is. We're exploring the material. So don't forget about the material. What's the ball made of, Marjorie? Is it made of plastic? Okay, yes, good. Scissors, metal, sink, lovely. Highlighter, plastic, float. There you go. Okay, so we're coming to all these conclusions because you can see that the plastic things are floating, the metal things are sinking. Lovely, lovely. So we're coming to all these conclusions. Did you remember to predict? Did you remember to guess? That's important. Now you would go to your little box on in your book and you would record your results. Now, a question to you teachers. Why do you think it's important to record the results? Why would we want to write down the results? This is something that scientists do, engineers do. They write things down, they record data. And it's important because Yes, Susanna, to assess, to check, okay, yes. Okay, it promotes the development of, um, of written, oral, visual, maybe digital skills, writing things down. Um, it, it involves documenting, organizing information. It could include sketching, you could, uh, record data by sketching. You could label things, uh, note taking. You're keeping a record of results, someone's saying. Yes. To compare with other items, exactly. And to share it with others, absolutely. So you've got it written down and you can share this. 
and it's a type of evidence as well of what you've been doing and what the, the answer was. You don't have to go around thinking, oh, what happened with the plastic one? I can't remember. You've got it there. So it's the evidence that you've got. Um, you could, it's journaling. You could photograph things if you're, for example, looking at how plants are growing. You could take photographs and that's a way of recording data. You've got different ways of recording data. It's not just writing things down. Um, so it's useful for analysis for interpretation. There are lots of benefits of learning how to record data, how to uh, write things down or draw things and keep a record of things, okay? So that's an important skill to learn too. So you could come back to everyone, you would ask them, okay, so did you guess? Did you guess um, what was going to happen? Did it float, sink when you thought it was going to or were your, was your prediction very different to your result in the end? So you could ask them that question. So they're reflecting about uh, their prediction and the results, okay? And this is what scientists do all the time. So it's okay if you're wrong. And sometimes you, you could be right, you could be wrong, but maybe you can give the exact, when you give your example, you can always uh, sh show that this is a, a wooden block. It's made of wood. Will it sink or float? So if it obviously floats, you might say, I think it sinks and show how when it floats and your prediction was wrong, it's okay, okay, because, you know, learners could get a bit frustrated when they find that their prediction was different to their result, but that's what we want to train them to do, to learn that if we predicted something and it was different to the result, it's okay, doesn't matter, that's the whole idea of it, otherwise you would already know the answer to everything, so why are we doing the experiments? Um, so when we do STEAM, what we want to do is also give learners STEAM feedback and help them become aware of the STEAM actions they're carrying out. So we talk about the scientific process or the actions that scientists and engineers take. We say, this is what scientists do. Wow, you're great scientists. Oh, I, can I can hear you thinking. What a great brain you've got in there. Um, while they're performing the experiment, we want them to connect this with the idea of being scientists or engineers, and this is what they do. Um, so we're going to look back now at the lesson objectives and think about what we did today. Um, so let's notice the essential steps that we took, the tips and tricks that make a lesson successful. So this is the teacher's book page from English code. I haven't invented anything today. Everything we did today has been taken from the teacher's book. I haven't invented anything. It's all there step by step. It's a great guide. Use it. You've got the lesson flow. You've got the lesson objective, the key language. Notice there's a focus on language, the key language for the lesson. It's integrating the lesson from the, for the, the language from the whole unit plus those little other language items they need for this um, session. So um, the STEAM lesson is connected to the theme, integrating the vocabulary with the experiment and the challenge. Okay, so this is what we did. I followed the, the teacher's book as it is when I was planning this. I used it to guide me. I didn't invent anything new. It's quite simple, isn't it? Not something very difficult to do, is it? We watched a video at the beginning in the Pearson's English portal, in the resources section. You will find lots of videos that go with these STEAM lessons. Every STEAM lesson has a video that goes with it. And these are designed to make the science really easy to understand. It was really short, wasn't it? And it was very easy to understand. So um, we have that as a starting point. And then we do the experiment and we can understand what this video is actually telling us about because we're put doing it hands-on now, not just watching it, but doing it hands-on. We can always pause the videos and ask what's happening, what do you think will happen, why do you think that happened, did you think that was going to happen? So we can ask all that type of um, deeper questioning so that they can think about what they're watching. I also try to help you to think of ways to adapt it to the online lesson. I know that some of you might be doing face-to-face, -face, but some of you might be doing online lessons. And many teachers ask, what, um, how can we do STEAM if we're doing, we're doing it online? Can we do STEAM online? Or is it impossible to do it? So we need to find ways to adapt it. 
gifts. I asked you to go and get a toy. And if you don't have a toy, get any object and we'll, we'll try and work around that. Probably your level one students will have toys at home. So that would be easy. Um, I sang a song just to make it playful and wait for you to come back and get you all back at the same time. Um, if they can't work in pairs or in groups, which is lovely for STEAM lessons because we want it to be collaborative if possible. Uh, but if they, we could use breakout rooms if you have them on your online platform. Otherwise, they can work individually. Brit um, send us videos. We can send them videos with the explanation and with the example of the experiment. Or we can do it all together with our little cameras on. So we can do it online as well if that's how you're working at the moment. Um, we differentiated instruction for fast finishes. Remember those fast finishes had to go and do the grouping activity. Remember to always have something up your sleeve for those who finish quick and, and we don't want them just sitting there getting bored doing nothing because that's when chaos starts. So um, have something ready for your fast finishes. We included digital literacy, searching for wooden toys or search for plastic toys. It's divided into two parts. So you've got your language time. We don't want to lose focus of our language aims. And we've got our experiment time, okay? So remember, we're not losing track of our language aims. The content vocabulary is presented and practiced through either texts or videos or the exercises. So you've always got your language there and you've got the practical experience with visual results and hands-on results, which is what learners need to actually learn something. It's not the same to read a text that says, um, plastic toys float, um, metal toys sink, than to actually do it and see it for yourself. And then that learning gets, is much deeper, isn't it? than just reading about it. So the hands-on part is really, really essential to learn these concepts. I talked you through the experiment when I was demonstrating, I talked you through it. I gave you lots of language input. I repeated, this is a toy car. It is made of metal, didn't I? I was repeating it. I was talking you through it. Um, so that then they can use that same language that you are using. Give them the exposure to the language, the input of the language, so that then they can use that language too, okay? Um, you will have to perhaps adapt some of your language for young learners. So maybe you will say guess instead of predict or hypothesize, okay? You might say guess and that's fine, but you're still using STEAM type of language and give STEAM praise. You're great scientists, or you're great engineers. So um, we'll connect with, G with STEAM jobs as well. We talked about what scientists do. We talked about engineers predicting, planning, um, recording data, making connections with how they work and how learners are working in class. We, at the end of the STEAM experience, we should go back to the lesson objective at the end and round it up and build awareness of what they have done, and what they've learned. OK, and you've also got an activity book. We, uh, Susanna, I made you scientists that I and I'm glad I'm glad you feel like a real scientist now. Um, so this is the activity book. And um, you've got some extension activities there, more practice, writing the toys, the material it's made of, also a section related to the experiment time itself to write a report on the experiment. So again, we're stressing the importance of recording data, reporting results. And at the bottom, if you have a look at the bottom, there is a self-assessment coloring feature at the end of each of these lessons that matches the lesson objective. So there are five light bulbs there. Can you see them? Five light bulbs to color in according to how comfortable your learners feel when they've completed um, the experiment um, and how comfortable they feel with the learning objective. So how many light bulbs would you give yourselves today? It says, I know about toy materials. And you've got five light bulbs. How many of those light bulbs would you color in for yourself today? One, two, three, four, five would be, I understand a lot about toy materials. How many would you give yourselves today? Okay, lots of fives and lots of five thumbs up. 
yeah, you could give yourself some five thumbs up if you like. <laughs> um, so that's what we've done and how you can go about a STEAM lesson today. So I'm glad you feel like you're scientists and that you've learned five light bulbs about what you know about toy materials. That's lovely. So that's what we've done. This is how you go about a STEAM lesson. See, it's not too complicated. If you follow the teacher's book, you'll be fine. English Code's teacher's book is very, very simple, very easy to follow. Um, so you'll do great. If you want to learn more about STEAM, you've got Steve, uh, Pearson's Experiences website, which is full of resources for you, um, pocket guide to STEAM, materials that you can download, posters, all the links to the recorded webinars are there, so you can go and watch them if you want to. You've got Pearson's blog where you will find blog posts about STEAM, about uh, misconceptions about STEAM, planning a successful STEAM lesson, integrating STEAM and stories, which is lovely for young learners. You can learn more about English code in English, in Pearson's um, catalog. And next webinar is next week. We're having our second lesson walkthrough. So I hope you will join me on Wednesday, the 14th for our lesson walkthrough, which is going to be an engineering experiment, making strong bridges. And before you go, there is a fourth blog post, which is not on the Pearson's blog yet, but will be tomorrow, Thursday. So keep an eye on Pearson's blog tomorrow, where you will find a new blog post called Making Connections. STEAM integrations in language classrooms. So if you're going to join me next week on Wednesday for the second lesson walkthrough, I suggest you go into Pearson's blog tomorrow, have a read of that blog post, that last one, Making Connections, because we're going to be looking at connections in the next lesson walkthrough. I'm going to be asking a few questions for you to answer in the chat box related to that blog post. Um, so that you can help me and we can interact and build up that lesson walkthrough together with that information you've read in the blog post. Remember, tomorrow, blog post to read. Wednesday, walkthrough to come to with that information that you've read about the, on the blog post. Okay, you've got the link in the chat box right now. Pearson English is saying the blog post will be posted here tomorrow and you've got the link. So. Click on that link, keep it open, and refresh it tomorrow so you can find that blog post. Have a read and join me next Wednesday. Thank you so much, everyone, for your participation. You've been excellent. Thank you for getting your materials ready, for joining me with the experiment, even doing it with me. You've been wonderful. Loved it. I hope you loved it too. Thank you very much for joining me for your participation in this lesson walkthrough. See you next Wednesday. Read the blog post. Hope you can join me. We'll build some strong bridges. Thank you, Pearson, for your support. And bye for now. Thank you very much, everyone.